It's Friday Feedback Friday, the feedback is day of the week. Ha. It is Feedback Friday, and what an ironic Feedback Friday, because the number one commented video was the thing about the Chun-Li costumes, the, the uh, Kuko, um, which YouTube originally demonetized, but actually um, said it was okay on manual review. For a change. Manual review. Oh, I slurred that. Um, for a change, which is a nice change. Those things normally get upheld. And I find that absolutely ridiculous. But they actually, you know, put that one back after I lost 3,000 views of income. But, you know, um, still, they somewhat corrected the mistake eventually. But then on, what was it Wednesday night? The the Trudeau news hit. The Time magazine published a photo of him at a party in 2001, uh, 2000, 2001. It's hard to tell exactly when it happened because it's like a school year. So did it happen at the beginning of the school year? At the end, not sure. But he was in an Aladdin costume with ridiculously dark skin. It was stupid. It was a stupid thing to do. And then, of course, two other instances show up, one going back to high school. And so this debate has been launched. And it's kind of similar to the debate that, you know, the the Kuko and, and the Chun-Li cosplay started about, you know, venues objecting to that because, I don't know, reasons when they've had issues with depictions of women in other forms and they seem to take a hypocritical stance and and the the sort of two tracks that these debates go into is one whether it's offensive in the first place two whether the outrage over the perceived offensiveness was hypocritical um we don't tend to get to the point of okay, if it was offensive, so what? You know, what's what's an appropriate amount of time to recognize that, first of all, you know, times were different in the case of the Chun-Li cosplay. Give me a break. If a, if a costume in a game that you allow on your service is okay, then real-life women should be able to cosplay that outfit. That is just absurd to me. Um, there's been a lot of fights, um, over the Trudeau thing, because obviously this is, this is more important, right? This is an election, and now, um, a, a, a guy, we, we basically have a choice between Trudeau with all his baggage, um, Andrew Scheer, who, you know, was, was, video surfaced of him in 2005 comparing gay people to dogs, um, which I don't really care about. The point is he hasn't apologized for it and and he hasn't shown real change and done things like attended pride and support Canada's LGBTQ plus communities. And then Jagmeet Singh, who's being treated as the hero of the hour right now, but back in 2017, um, Jagmeet Singh claimed when confronted by a reporter that he didn't know who was responsible for uh, a, the the worst terrorist attack in Canadian history, uh, Air India Flight 182. One of my absolute best friends at the time was on that flight. Um, it, uh, um, it was a Sikh extremist group that plotted and executed the thing. Um, Jagmeet Singh is Sikh. This is this is why it's relevant that he he claimed he didn't know who did it after two different inquiries um, came to the same conclusion. Um, but uh, it it was a it was a Sikh separatist group and and it was an anti Indian act of of violence. Over three hundred people lost their lives. I think it was something like three hundred and seven passengers and twenty two crew members um, were killed including my seven-year-old friend, her, I think her brother was four or five, and their mother. 
her I, re I remember the day my mom got the call from her father and um you know his whole family had just been taken away and so for somebody who in 2017 was like oh we don't know who was responsible for that before having to walk that back after calling the reporter who asked the question racist um now apparently being all moved to tears over the fact that racism and bigotry exists I have a real problem with that. Now, because of my gut level reaction to Jagmeet Singh's comments in 2017, I get some of the people who are seeing those images and are very upset. I admit, I, I thought the pictures of the, the, the Aladdin picture was disturbing. It was ignorant. Middle Eastern people are not that dark. Um, I can see why people seeing that image would feel like it was mocking. Um, it was stupid. Um, you know, when, and, and a nuanced dive into this goes, is anybody surprised that there was this kind of stupidity going on in elite private schools in you know, the, the 90s and, and the, then the, two, the early 2000s, um, no one should be surprised. The, those, those places are just hives of bad behavior because it's entitled kids and nobody tells them no. But I'm, I'm really bothered. It's, it's conjuring up a lot of bad memories in me of the fact that in the 90s, Trudeau's only, I think, six years older than I am. Uh, so he would have graduated high school in, I guess, 89. I graduated in 95. Um, but, uh, y you know, the fact that in the 80s, kids at elite schools were able to get up at a school assembly with their face darkened and sing Deo and nobody sat them down and talked to them. Like, th th this was my issue with the, um the the kids at the 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 MAGA hat kids that was like if you go back and look at my video there I'm not blaming the kids I'm blaming the educators who aren't educating kids um by the time he got into his 20s there's a a higher burden that he should know better I find it very telling that Gerald Butts the guy who was uh who was the the um, mind behind that more left than left campaign, like that image of Trudeau's, which I've always found to be a bit of a crock. Um, but um, he met Trudeau in college. So Gerald Butts, Mr. Lefty, was Trudeau's friend while Trudeau was doing these various instances. It's almost like it was his thing. You know, he was the guy who painted his skin dark and ha ha ha, so funny. Um, but he was his friend then. And he clearly wasn't telling him to knock it off. Like, this happened in schools. And so this isn't the fault of one person. This is a failure of the entire system. And it's just that, you know, out in out in Vancouver at the time, you know, the majority um, population is, is, is Asian, primarily Chinese, not... Uh, not Middle Eastern or Persian. Um, and so I guess there wasn't a sensitivity there. I have no idea. I, I just think back to my own experiences in school. And um, I can't deny there was a lot of racism. I mean, I, I've talked before about, you know, um, the the very multicultural environment I, I went to school in. And, um, uh, you know, I'm grateful for that because of the experience, the, the empathy uh, that I got for different types of peoples. But there was a lot of anti-Pakistani racism uh, in the 90s in those schools. Um, you know, I, I have distinct memories of, you know, b uh, black kids making fun of the way Asian kids talked, making fun of the way um, Pakistani kids talked making fun of the fact that the recent um, Afghani and, and Somali immigrants didn't speak English very well. Um, and, you know, white kids did it too, don't get me wrong, but there there was a lot of mockery of the way 
um, Asian kids spoke. And part of it was class. Part of it was sort of a retaliation against they were visa students. So they were actually paying to go there. So they were of means. And so maybe there was some some class warfare going on there. But, you know, when you grow up in that environment, you realize that um, racism isn't just something that white people do to other races. Let's not confuse it with system systemic racism in which systems in colonial times controlled by whites, it, you know, actually set up a system where white good, everything else not as good. Uh, we're not talking about this. We're talking about these stupid, petty cruelties that people do to each other. And that is not exclusive to any single race. Um, you know, the Asian kids didn't think too highly of the black kids either. There was a lot of discrimination there. It was, it was flying everywhere. The school was a pressure cooker. And so... Um, you know, the thing is, we also had multicultural assemblies where, <coughs> I mean, other people, um, I remember I did a fashion show where I wore a sari. Um, I didn't darken my skin for it. Um, you know, um, and, uh, but that was sort of a sharing of cultures. Obviously, that's different. But the nuance here is like, where do we draw the line on this stuff? And why is a, you know, 17 to 19 year old photo, depending on who you ask, um, negating a person's behavior of the last five years? This is odd to me. Uh, and I, I say this as somebody, like I said, who was very disturbed by the photo. I actually believe that the media has been intensely irresponsible, splashing that image everywhere. I think there should be a content warning. I, at first, when I saw it was a black and white photo, you know, critical thinking engages, like Monday's video, critical thinking engages, wait, it's a black and white photo. We have no idea that that was brown makeup. It could be blue, it could be green, but when it came out that um, it was just, darkened makeup, um, I I felt ill. I felt physically sick. I, I was really bothered by that because it is ignorant. Because in 2001, he should have known better. He clearly didn't. Um, I, I don't think he did it to be mean. But just because you don't intend to be mean doesn't mean you don't hurt people. And I think it's been patently irresponsible of the media to splash that image everywhere because it it does hurt people who I mean I'm just coming at this from someone who observed racism against brown people like I said you know one of my best friends in in when I was little you know when I was four five six years old uh you know my friend Aparna she got she was killed in that in that bombing um so I saw people be kind of mean to her because of the color of her skin, but not as much as, you know, kids who came over. She was Indian. Uh, kids who came over who didn't speak the language very well, who had, who had like a heavy accent. They got it way worse. And so it bothers me. I can't imagine how seeing that image again and again and again and again will bother people who were, you know, directly affected by by the bullying now i've talked to some friends of mine some of them are like whatever it was old other people are very bothered and like that's people people should have the right to be disturbed by images that are inherently disturbing and like violence um media should be issuing content warnings so that parents don't parents can shield their kids or even even adults who are dealing with their own trauma should be able to turn off the tv so they don't see the image should be able to not have to see it on the covers of newspapers um i do think the media was somewhat irresponsible they they um they amplified exponentially the you know the memories of pretty serious traumas that some people have. I mean, as much as I think uh, Jagmeet Singh is being a little unaccountable, I, I do think that his emotional response was genuine. 
just because he has blind spots himself doesn't mean that, you know, he didn't experience racism. I, I do think his emotions were genuine and people should be able to avoid that if they choose. They can't if it's everywhere. And I think it's interesting that, you know, social media, Twitter didn't have the image pop up passively. But every major news organization that ran with this story did. They smelled blood, they smelled clicks, and they pounced. And they didn't think about the collateral damage that they were doing to people who are sickened by this image and don't want to see it again and again and again. And I think it's important that we did see it. We did sort of, you know, for people who are horrified like me, accept the horror, accept that he did do this. 19 years ago, 18 years ago, but he did do this. Uh, and I do think it's fair to, in light of this, um, and, you know, the more you sort of follow hardcore social justice circles, this this is a familiar refrain, right? Like people who scold other people tend to have... Um, tend to have skeletons in their closet. And I, I do believe Trudeau when he said he didn't tell anybody because he was too embarrassed. You know, I'm actually worried about some photo shoots I've done because when I did television in the 2000s, I was actually forced to use, remember the age of sunless tanner, the, the tanner exit Paris Hilton trend? They made me self-tan. So I had to darken my skin for television because I was too pale. I'm afraid that people are going to see certain photo shoots of like, you know, I'm in a I'm in a dark wig and and, uh, uh, you know, kind of a warrior woman chainmail bikini thing. Um, you know, I did I did a, a 1001 Nights photo shoot because we did a, a, a calendar. But I mean, my skin wasn't that dark, right? Like it was just body bronzer. It it was still like not, not what Trudeau did. But I mean, I'm like, are people going to see those and get the wrong idea? You know, are people going to see that as some sort of brown face or instead of just, you know, the discrimination against pale people that happens in the media? It's a weird phenomenon, right? Because people will find an image and I'm not saying there's any excuse for what Trudeau did. There isn't. Um, but you know, people will see an image, not know the story behind it, and potentially get the wrong idea. Um, the minute I couldn't, I didn't have to do that stupid tanning anymore, I stopped because it was gross. I couldn't wear a white dress. I couldn't wear anything light colored that like rubbed because that stuff like rubbed off and stained everything you owned. But it was like, you know, too dark was bad. Too pale was bad. You had you had to be in this area of acceptability because I was me and, a, and another another um, woman who worked at Much Music, Rachel Perry. We were always being told we were too hard to light. You know, uh, they the I got the same thing about a darker skinned uh, woman who worked on our show. They claim she was too hard to light. And it's like, holy crap, like this kind of stuff happened right in that period. It was a really weird, conformist, stupid um and and quite honestly, I don't really think human beings actually become truly mature until well after 30. And that's something I think you only really understand as you get older. Like anybody who doesn't look back on their teens and 20s and go, wow, I was just a stupid idiot back then, you know, hasn't evolved, you know, like... I'm thinking now about all the times where somebody did something um, racist. Somebody made a racist joke or, you know, um, and I, I didn't speak up. And I might have even, you know, chuckled awkwardly because you're trying to fit in. Because I did go, hey, guys, knock it off at times. And I was accused of having no sense of humor. I was accused of being too thin skinned. I couldn't take a joke. I didn't understand funny. I didn't understand comedy. And it's it's hard to constantly be hit with that. 
And and I do remember this a, a couple kids that they were really being they were Pakistani kids and, and they were really being mercilessly taunted. And I did tell people to knock it off. And and then they turn on you. Right. Like, that's the thing. Um, I I knew other kids who went along with it, even though they didn't like it. You know, kids, we were probably young teenagers at the time. But I knew other people that went along with it, even though they really didn't like it because they were afraid. You know, they they didn't want to have the bullies turn on them and end up in their sights. It's it's a complicated thing. And does that excuse it? No, I think we all feel a great deal of remorse over um, um, the times we didn't do the best thing we could do, even if we didn't actively participate. I mean... I, I'm still kind of struck by the racism I, I I see in people quite close to me. And you do have to pick your battles. Um, it's, it's not popular to say, I don't like this. I think this is wrong. It is amazing how... I remember I, I, I called out a family member's racism against Muslims once and everybody who observed the conversation jumped all over me for embarrassing that person. And I'm like, you're jumping on me for embarrassing somebody? What about, the, you know, what about the the racism against people from certain societies that are gone? They didn't care. They didn't care because those people weren't people to them. They They were the butt of jokes. They were inhuman. They didn't know anybody of that organization. And people don't speak to me till this day because I embarrassed them. This is not a simple problem. And I mean, I've taken a lot of crap. I've been blacklisted. I've been, I've been smeared in gaming because I didn't take that hard line and I didn't do the call out thing. I didn't do the cancel culture. I didn't do the shame, shame, shame. You know, I'm like, look, as long as somebody clears to, seems to have no ill intent here, I'm going to continue to have a conversation with them, even if they might be hanging around some people that I know are bad news. Um, you know, I just had somebody yesterday I, I still communicate with who was on the pro gamer gate side of Gamergate. And he said the biggest mistake he made was not seeing Miley Yiannopoulos for what he was sooner. And I said to the guy, do you recall what I was saying at the time that that guy was bad news and, you know, trusting him is a mistake? And he said, yeah, I didn't know you that well back then. Um, so, you know, people learn. And, you know, imagine if I just demonized those people. Who knows how many people would have slipped into that echo chamber of opportunism. Like, that's the whole thing. It's thankless to really be doing stuff that is encouraging people to be individuals, to not engage in tribalism, to not dismiss people just because they seem different from you it's really hard and um part of that is having to weather stuff that is uncomfortable that that does bother me at times there was a guy on twitch yesterday where you know i have a three strikes rule i do not allow any any implications that someone deserves to be physically harmed in my Twitch chat. And so this guy showed up and I don't know who he was talking about, but he said he deserved to be hanged. And I'm like, whoa, 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 we don't do that there. And the guy said, fine, castrated. I said, stop it now. You do it again or I kick you. And I waited. And of course, the guy called me a fat whore and I banned him. But I don't, you know, I apologize for people. I said, sorry, because I stopped. I tabbed out of the game and I stopped and I waited, gave that guy that third strike and then he was gone. But I asked him to stop first. Assume it was a guy, who knows? But I asked him to stop first. And that's my rule. I'm not just going to dismiss somebody over one bad comment over a few weak moments because they might be good people or are having a very, very bad day. I know some 
very kind, very considerate people who swore at me like crazy when they first met me because they had preconceptions about me. And it's like, whoa, 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 let's have a conversation, you know, take it down a notch and we can talk. And they did to their credit. And, you know, then I find out that they've got, they've got their own struggles in life. And the reason they were so angry is they felt like their struggles weren't being acknowledged. And, you know, one thing I, I really appreciate about the long term, the long time commenters on this channel, we can disagree on various points, but I, I really do think, especially through that disagreement that we affirm each other as human beings, because we, we all come out of no two people agree on anything 100% of the time. Disagreement's fine. Disagreement's healthy, you know? Um, it's important to see other perspectives that aren't your own. Because, I mean, a lot of these anti, I believe to be anti-woman social justice crusaders, they, they think they're doing the right thing. I really do. I really think they're doing a right th the right thing. Because they don't have the experience of trying to be a manager in a push-up bra, a corset, and high-heeled shoes. And, and, and that was my job on camera. And yet somebody who would talk to me one way when I wasn't in the uniform of the show wouldn't be able to look me in the eye and got all weird when I was in costume. It's like, come on. Um, the, you know, the... Um, there are real things to demonizing female sexuality and, and you know, by reflection, demonizing male sexuality, because let's face it, the only reason that the female sexuality is the excuse for demonizing the female sexuality is it's because it's for men. Um, it, it's just, it's just puritanism. It's, it's just demonizing the sex urge. And quite frankly, I would prefer, you know, younger people grow up a lot less impressed by sex because then they're not going to feel like they have to rush out and do it personally like like teenagers are, are curious about that stuff and that's why I don't like what's being um banned on twitch because you know if some 15 year old it makes his life seeing a little bit of thigh and a woman wearing tights and a Chun-Li outfit what's wrong with that I mean if if he can get those thrills through videos, you know, they're not going to go out and engage in unsafe behavior in the real world. I would prefer that. I, I would prefer there be, you know, a stepped down loss of innocence. Back when we had, like, you snuck people, you snuck your, your dad's playboys or your uncle's playboys or something like that because you were curious. Um, I, I really think the more these things are hidden the more valuable they seem to young people. If it's just kind of whatever, you know, if you have a frank conversation with young people about sex, they're less, it, it seems less like a rite of passage to adulthood as far as I'm concerned. Like you, if you want kids to wait, you got to give them permission to wait. You got to give them like, no, here's all the reasons why make sure you're ready instead of just trying to, trying to hide the fact that it exists from people. It, this, all, this all just seems so wrongheaded. We just seem to live in a culture of fear and distrust at a time where I think we have more reason to trust people than ever because it's very hard to hide stuff now, you know? Um, the fact that yearbook photos from half a lifetime ago are becoming relevant, things are going to come out, you know, and, uh, I, I just, I, I, more and more and more, I, I think that we really need to practice forgiveness and we really do need to practice fairness and, 
I just wonder how, how do you think we go about doing it? Because there's just a cycle of anger right now, right? Like, oh, they were hypocrites, so I'm going to jump all over them. But now you're engaging in exactly the kind of like cancel culture behavior that you claim to dislike. So how do we stop it? Like I get, I get the emotional frustration. I do. But acting that way doesn't do any good. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you're just perpetuating the cycle you claim not to like. So I'm curious about your your solutions. I didn't do Patreon. I forgot. You can tell I'm kind of off my game. I'm kind of thrown off. But uh, Patreon, Patreon, you should become a member because who knows if this video will be demonetized for racism. Okay, have a great weekend and thanks for watching.